Speaker, alongside financial support for Australians in need, we're also investing in new programs to tackle entrenched disadvantage, putting our trust in the knowledge and passion of locals to break the chains of intergenerational poverty. I see it in my own community, library programs unlocking the world of learning, sporting clubs building pride, community groups mentoring young people into apprenticeships, breakthroughs and progress driven by locals and leaders. And tonight we back their hard work with a $200 million plan which includes funding place-based partnerships, encouraging evidence-based policy directed at a local level, investment in projects that are delivering measurable success, a new partnership that will help government and philanthropy to coordinate their efforts. And in addition, more funding for community organisations so that they can pay their bills and pay their workers and keep delivering for people in need. This will sit alongside $1.9 billion for First Nations health, housing, education, employment and other essential services, and $250 million for a new Central Australia package to improve safety and provide more opportunities for more people in their communities. Speaker, from energy bill reliefs to national defence, manufacturing to Medicare, Investments in this budget aim to make Australia more resilient and more secure in uncertain times. And fundamental to this is our responsible economic management and our efforts to put the budget's budget on a much stronger foundation. This budget, we've returned 82 per cent of the extra revenue windfall that's come largely from lower unemployment, stronger jobs and wages growth and higher prices for key exports. We've now returned 87 per cent over this budget and the last. We've also found $17.8 billion in savings and redirected spending, $40 billion over two budgets. And we've limited annual real spending growth to just 0.6 per cent over five years. Because our first two budgets made such a firm commitment to responsibility and restraint, we are now forecasting a small surplus in 2022-23 which would be the first in 15 years. Yeah. We expect that to be followed by a deficit of $13.9 billion in 23-24 and lower deficits across the forward years compared to recent budgets, leading to a $125.9 billion improvement in the budget over five years and a much lower public debt burden. Gross debt to GDP is now expected to peak lower and earlier at 36.5 per cent of GDP in 25-26, where it will be $154 billion less than was expected in March 2022. And because we're returning most of the welcome improvement in revenue to the budget, debt will be almost $300 billion lower by the end of the medium term, saving $83 billion in interest costs over the next 12 years. Speaker, we are expecting one of the biggest turnarounds on record. 